Let me take you back 61 years ago today to February the 21st, 1952. In Dhaka, then part of eastern Pakistan, now Bangladesh, students have gathered to protest the decision to make Urdu and not Bangla their official language. A tense standoff takes place and then, just after 4 p.m. local time, police fire on the students and activists, killing dozens of them. The outrage that followed led eventually to Bangladesh gaining independence in 1971 and to us marking International Mother Language Day on this date every year. Now more than ever, there is a movement to protect mother tongues. The U.S. estimates as many as half of the world's 6,000 languages, that's half, could be lost by the end of this century. Well, with me here in the studio is Raja Kashif, a British Pakistani singer and composer, Rabaya Jahan, a Bangladesh-born singer. I'm also joined by Guni Yildiz, a reporter from the BBC World Service, and Natia Abrahima, a producer of the BBC's Russian service. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, if I could start with you, Raja. You've, obviously, you're a musician, you're a composer. How important is your mother tongue to you? It's very important, um, but I think every musician says this in every interview that Music is a universal language, so everything comes under the banner of music. But um, if within your music you can you can support and you know promote your language, I think that's the best thing any musician can do. Well, let's have a listen to a clip from one of your recent projects. <laughs> One of the key things there, Rajas, you're having a great time, <laughs> but also you uh, compose, you sing in two different languages. Why is that? Um, actually. Uh, in this specific project, we used um, uh, Bengali and Urdu, but then we added some Farsi Persian words as well. And why? Um, but the actual the, the peg that we gave to this album um, was supposed to be a peace project, a loving project between Pakistan and, and Bangladesh, um, because it has a bit of a history. And I thought it would be nice to give something as UK-born you know, Pakistani and Bengali artists to give something back to um, our communities. Rabah, what does it mean to you to be performing in your mother tongue? It's 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 lovely because uh, because but if I go back and then um, my my people has fought for their own language, I respect them and uh, as a Bangladesh, I'm proud of that as well. And then when I met uh, Raja Kashif, is also I'm a very very um, good producer, music producer, and then he has uh, offered me a, a very, I mean work to do with him. It's an honor to do. Does it mean work. something more to you though yes. to be performing in your own language rather than English? Uh, yeah, why not? I mean, I mean, I love, I, I love as a Bangladeshi, I love my mother tongue, and uh, everybody loves their mother tongue definitely, and uh, we are proud of that. And uh, and uh, yeah, uh, because uh, we are working uh, two languages, so uh, combining uh, music, why not? It's a, it's a lovely work to do. Let's turn to both yes. of you now, Guni. How much is it important to you, to your family? How much does it give you a sense of who you are? that your mother tongue is Kurdish. Yeah, I, I need to confess that I came to realize the importance of my mother tongue later in my life. Uh, it's unfortunately banned in Turkey to, to teach the language in uh, state schools, and there are not many areas that you can use Kurdish. So, so what happens if you go out onto the street in Turkey and speak Kurdish? Uh, I mean, the, the, the bans are lifted uh, at the moment, the official bans, and Turkish uh, TV uh, broadcasts in Kurdish at the moment, but you may get, get into trouble in some um, spots in Turkey if you speak Kurdish or you uh, make yourself known as publicly as Kurdish. So for you, when you speak the language, does it give you a sense of solidarity, in a way, with your people? Um, uh, maybe it's more, more to do with the identity uh, or, or, and also solidarity. Kurdish people, because of the restrictions on, on the language, when you speak Kurdish to a Kurdish person, there is immediately a bond or a kind of solidarity, uh, regardless of uh, where he's from. Natia, you're nodding uh, as mm -hmm. we hear this. Is it the same for you? Yes, absolutely. We Georgians, we're a very small nation, like 
four million, more than four million, but definitely under five. And speaking Georgian to someone is a very special feeling for us because not many people, you would not hear a Georgian language spoken by someone non-Georgian. Very few foreigners speak it. So sharing um, something is in this language is very special for so us. So you live here in London. Who do you speak Georgian to? I live Georgian. I speak Georgian to my family, to my daughter who is th 13. She's bilingual because she's been going to school here for many years. And we, I try to speak uh, Georgian to her all the time. What do you tell her that's interesting, to have a child that you're speaking the language to, about why it's important? It is very uh, important. We have a saying in Georgian that you're more than one person if you speak more than one language, as if like every language makes you more uh, richer. And uh, I, I teach her the language. I sometimes read to her some phrases that I love for it. Sometimes we watch movies and I love to tears and she just doesn't understand it. And then I have to explain, but jokes after they're explained are not as funny anymore. Um, but I try as hard as I can because it's really important that she carries the language and she's more than one person for can, me. Can you tell us, just out of interest, how you say that phrase, that you're more than one person? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a phrase for us as well? Yeah, I think a relevant phrase would be uh, which means uh, trees grow over their roots and people grow through their language. That's amazing. Can you both think of a sort of relevant example in your language? I'm actually going to use um, the, the one from the song because Mevisha means beautiful. And what we've done is, uh, in, I'm actually going to sing the Bangla one if you actually allow me to. Uh, even the Urdu is my mother tongue. But, um, Tumi amar koli ja, tumi je kobita, upurupa shona moina ta. <laughs> so I've done the Bengali one and music just covers everything and yeah. that only means you're my heart, you're my love, you're beautiful and you're everything. Do you yeah. think a respect for language is a sort of key factor in us all living peacefully together or having that as an aspiration? I think it's the main thing, um, specifically in the UK, um, we've got so many different yeah. backgrounds and if we cannot live on that slogan yeah. that you've just so spoken we about. From um, I mean, different different countries, still uh, our children are growing up here, and uh, it's our responsibility to you know give them, um, let them know that uh, you got in their background as well. We've, we've got in their background, and sh they should know much about it. I think. Um, Do you think? They should be proud. Yeah, they should, they should be, proud. be proud. I mean, Do you think our children learn better if they learn their mother tongue first? I would agree with that. Yeah. I would agree with that because it's very natural for mothers to speak a mother tongue and um, has to be very natural to communication with the, with them. I, I think most of the children do as well. I mean, they, yeah. they, they, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, really, I mean, I live in East London. It's interesting. Yeah. So many of the kids speak Bengali. Yeah. But that my little boy has got a few words as well. Yeah. Although I don't sense from those children a sense of pride in their language. Yeah, They're yeah. busy trying to learn English. Their parents are pushing them to learn yeah, English. Yes, Do you think that yes. there's a challenge there to say to parents that the mother tongue is as important? English is an international language. Yes. So you can go anywhere and everybody will understand English, something. <laughs> so I think that's, that's something which we all should learn. And um, being British born, and then just respecting our cultures and everybody it's else's cultures. It's a hard job for the children because, uh, um, because as we are singing, we are, we are singing in Hindi, uh, like Punjabi, Punjabi, Bangla, why not? Uh, like we're doing it, so it's it's easy for them ev even, for the children. And to what about teenagers? Are they listening to music in all languages as well? I think now because of the, the internet and everything, they listen to everything. <laughs> they, um, I, I, I can name you so many Bollywood composers, because I've worked in Bollywood as well, that have actually picked up Korean compositions, and um, so it's brilliant. What about with young Kurdish people, Guni? Are they listening to pop music in Kurdish? Are there people performing in Kurdish all the time? Actually, Kurdish music is uh, quite popular among uh, Kurdish children. Uh, but speaking the language, I think it's p picking up. As uh, you told before, uh, the parents, Kurdish parents in Turkey used to push uh, their children to speak uh, Turkish rather than Kurdish. But it's been uh, be becoming, um, it it's been changing uh, recently with the upsurge in the conflict and political awareness and with the lifting of some restrictions in Turkey. Well, as we all celebrate Mother Tongue Day, thank you all very much, very much for being with us. I have to say, I only speak English. I am envious to sit amongst people who speak so many other languages. So thank